Next up, I have an article from Peter Steinberger, The New Shiny. So this is uh, on the shift from imperative to declarative UI and what it means to build the apps of today and tomorrow. So like he says in the opening here, right? There's a shift happening in how mobile apps are built <laughs> again, right? A few years ago, right, we were building uh, Objective-C and Java, like languages from the 80s and 90s. More recently, we started moving to Swift and Kotlin, more uh, recent languages. Now we're transitioning from imperative to declarative. So imperative is how we used to do things in UIKit. Declarative uh, is in Swift UI. And he says here, declarative UI requires thinking about app development from a new perspective. And I can attest to this, right? I had only done imperative development my whole career, right? The six years before I started really working in Swift UI. And I had to completely rewire my brain to go from the imperative way of thinking to the declarative way of thinking. And honestly, it took like a month or two of working in Swift UI a lot for it to like finally click. And I started like thinking the declarative way. Like it's a big shift if you've never done declarative UI before. So I highly recommend checking this article out. I'll give you a couple little uh, highlights here. It gives the history of declarative, how it kind of started with React Native and Facebook, how it evolved with, you know, Flutter and Dart and all that stuff. And then how, right, platform vendors started getting involved. That's Jetpack Compose, that's Swift UI, right? Where Apple and, and Google or, or Android are actually making their own rather than like a third party framework. How, how those first party frameworks have their advantages. I like this one though, bridging the iOS Android divide. He gives an example of how something is written in Swift UI and how similar it is to uh, Jetpack Compose, right? So there's the two examples and how this can help, you know, two different teams that are building for Android and iOS maybe, you know, come together a little bit more because they are very similar, right? We've always heard how Kotlin and Swift are very similar. Now it seems like Swift UI and Jetpack Compose are very similar. So that can only help, again, bridge that iOS uh, Android divide. And then I'll go down to his conclusion to sum up uh, what I really agree with here, right? It says the future is declarative. You know, that promise of cross-platform development of write once, run anywhere, didn't really pan out. You know, some developers would rather quit than write a couple lines of React Native, right? So the promise didn't really work out, but now that first party platforms are in the game with SwiftUI and Jetpack Compose, they're now reaching maturity. It's apt time to consider uh, adopting them. And then the final uh, summary here that again, I really uh, agree with my prediction, companies that adopt these technologies will have an easier time attracting and retaining engineers. I saw this firsthand last summer for iOS 14. I hired two iOS developers uh, on a project. And when I was working with the client and I knew he wanted to build a team around this, I recommended going all in on Swift UI. And I was up front, I was like, hey, there's gonna be some headaches, you know, maybe for the first year, but if you're trying to build a team around this and you wanna attract talent, you know, requiring iOS 14, going Swift UI, we did server-side Swift, like a lot of Swift developers, that's like their dream project. So I do agree with this, that you do have an easier time attracting and retaining talent and you'll be able to build modern, you know, engaging apps, you know, to stay relevant in the future. So yeah, even though we may not quite be there with these new declarative frameworks, I really think we're on the edge, we're on the cusp. I think we're about to get that tipping point to where it does become like the way to do things. This was a clip from an iOS development news show that I put out on a monthly basis. If you like this sort of stuff and you want to see the complete show, check out my channel. I got a whole playlist of them. And if you want to check out Swift News as it's released, I put it out at the beginning of every month. See you in the next one.